and good morning everyone so this morning on a very sunny day we are here with this voxel mocker for a brake pads and disc replacement we actually got called in for grinding noise on this vehicle she didn't know what it was she thought it was a suspension issue because whenever she turns right there's like a grinding noise is going <laughs> but as you know it could be many things so i inspected the suspension parts and stuff like that everything is okay nothing is grinding except for the brake wear indicator right there um, as you can see her brake pads are gone so we're going to be replacing this and i'm actually going to show you this is going to be a tutorial video more than a vlog i'm going to show you how to replace it i'm going to get this side done first and then when when i get to the other side i'm going to be videoing how i replace it and stuff so for this time i'm going to run a time lapse on this one once we get to the other side i am actually going to show you step by step on how to replace it so bear with me one second i'm going to run a time lapse right so the first thing that you want to do before you even touch the brakes is to make sure that you open the brake fluid reservoir first thing that you want to do just to open it up you don't need to fully open it just in case contaminants and stuff like that goes in or even the weather for example if it's raining like this you don't want to be opening it fully so it's the first thing that we want to do Alright guys, it's tipping it down now, but I'm still going to do it. You know, getting paid for it is what it is. Here's the step by step. What you want to do first is to jack up the car. Um, there is a mounting point where you can jack it over here on the body. As you can see right there. Jack it up there. What you want to do is to remove this plastic caps. Blocking wheel nut. If you don't have an impact wrench like myself, what you want to do, you want to loosen up the wheel bolt. It's safe to put this under the car whilst you're doing this. The next thing that you want to do now is to loosen the 14mm bolts at the back of the caliper. It's not tight. They're usually only like 20 to 25 newton meters. Anything tighter than that, someone's played with it. I'm going to show it to you guys how to easily compress the piston back in place. So once your caliper bolt is loose, the next thing that you wanna do is to obviously just keep the bolt in place for the time being. This is only recommended by the way, if you're replacing the brake disc because sometimes the pistons are very tough and it can actually warp the disc because we're gonna be using the disc as a leverage. Do this, don't recommend doing this if you're not replacing the disc. There are proper tools out there sort it out now that there is a little gap in between the piston and the brake pads what you want to do is to move the brake pad across next to that and we're going to use the brake disc as a leverage and you see this gap right here so what you want to do is you want to push the pad towards the piston here you want to push that across so that you can get in between the pads and the disc and then we're going to leverage it like that as you can see now i can fit my little pry bar in there and then all i have to do is to leverage it until that piston goes all the way back as you can see in the process we are also slowly damaging the brake disc so it's not recommended for you to do this if you're not going to replace the brake disc There we go, as you can see we're fully compressed now, so we're just going to remove the bolts and we can easily take the caliper out. Now, as you can see, this brake disc is slightly damaged now, it's probably going to be a little bit scratch in the inside as well. But, just have to be careful if you want to use that method, like what I said, I don't recommend it if you're not replacing the brake disc. Now, what you want to do is to remove the brake pads completely, so we can get the caliper holder off. She is nice one and there's another from this point the next thing that we want to do we want to remove the two 18 mil bolts 
at the back this is a DIY video so I am not going to show you me using an impact wrench because I want you guys to learn it with just your basic tools pretty much use an impact to remove the wheel but I've also told you how to remove it without having an impact wrench so we're gonna get ourselves a uh, an extension bar just so that we can remove it remember it's left to Lucy Sometimes they can be very very tight though so you have to be careful you might need to use a very long extension I have all the power tools that I need just to make my life a little bit easier but I'm not going to use it this time around because I want to show you guys how to do it manually That's off. Now we're going to be taking the brake disc off and to do that we have to remove this T30. There you go. I was about to resort in using my impact but I'm going to stick to it. I'm going to do it manually just so that you guys can see that it is possible to do this at home. You don't need to take it to your local dealers or in your local garage. Cheers, that's out. Break the scout, just like that. Now that we've got the brake disc out, the next thing that we want to do is to obviously clean the surface of the hub just to make sure that everything is sitting in nice and flush when we put the new brake disc in. Let's get to that. Again, I have a tool for this, but I'm not going to use it, I'm just using a normal wire brush. And there you have it a cleaned hub so now the next thing that we want to do is to get the brake disc and put the new one in in here i have a special area where i could get brake paste this is it's actually made for brakes i've only just spilled it like a moment ago so i'm just going to grab those and what you want to do you see this you want to apply it on the lobe of the brake pads because that's the contact point and that is where it usually gets seized, the brake pads. There you go, sparingly, not too much. And just make sure that when using grease, you're not using metal based grease, you're actually using just a normal grease. Make sure that it's designed for brakes and not for metal to metal contact. Put that there on the outside as well. Now, what you want to do next is you want to take the old fittings that was here so clean it with your brush that way you can ensure that the pads are sitting correctly on the caliper holder now this is very important you have to check to see if these are moving freely and these are there's no problem on it at all it's not seized as you can see right there so there's no problem with that now just have to clean it now we're going to be putting the new brake disc in so with this one because it's got a special coating on it you don't really need to clean the surface anymore because there's no actual oil in it it's got a protective coating on it already so there's no need for us to clean it there you go now this t30 here what you want to do is to torque this to 10 newton meters just 10 not too tight this has actually got a purpose as you can see there it needs to fit in this properly what do you call it? chamfered? it's supposed to sit in there nice um, it's actually got a torque settings in it grab yourself a torque wrench borrow it or something make sure that it's in there nice and snug not tight there's a difference to that now we're going to be putting the fittings in to the brake caliper holder just like that there you go you just press it in Nice and snug. You can't really get this one wrong because it can only go in one way. Press it in. Now we're gonna be putting this back on. Right. 
now that that's in there the next thing to do now is to talk it up again as per manufacturer spec i believe with this one is 110 newton meters we're going to be doing just that i need to replace this torque wrench because i think it's lost a tooth or two days after that it's time to put your brake pads in the one with the indicator like this one right so now i have to switch cameras because uh, the camera died so what you want is the one without the indicator goes on the outside and what you want to do is you want to be putting the a lobe in slanted as such because it will actually help you to put it back in like this like that and that is in now it's just time to push it you can see contact point is sorted just don't need to worry about it next thing now is to put the one with the sensor in it on the inside like what i said put the elo bin slanted and in the top part same thing again doing it single-handedly never done it before prefer to do it with two hands i'm gonna put it in just like that there you go you can see i didn't need to hammer anything in it just went in straight if you needed to hammer something in it didn't go in correctly there you go that's moving in correctly now next one is to put the brake caliper in and that should be us done you literally just slide it in like that and make sure that where the bolts go into it's not in your way because otherwise you're gonna be struggling and questioning yourself why it's not going in as you can see right there it's not blocking it so all we gotta do is to push it in there you go now that I sat down, put the two caliper bolts, would be the bottom one. There you go. There she is. We're going to be tightening this to 25 Newton meters apparently. Normally it's 20 Newton meters, but let's go. Again, doing it single handedly because I don't have my tripod and that camera's run out. There you go and that's your brake pads in this done on a mocha now we just have to put the wheel back in and torque it up this is for the torque heroes oh, Jesus Christ this torque wrench All right, okay, now we're all done. We're just gonna be pressing on the brakes. There you go. And make sure the travel is nice. The first time you press it, obviously it's gonna go all the way in because you retracted the piston and you want it to bring it back out again. So now we're gonna go for a test drive again just to make sure that the grinding noise is not there anymore. That's us done on this box on Mocha. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And because I definitely did enjoy showing you what to do on this, uh, on this tutorial so yeah please like subscribe and comment as well and say what you think but yeah thank you for suggesting guys i appreciate it and thank you very much for watching so we'll see you in the next one peace right always the first thing that you want to do oh, oh before replacing brake pads in this is to <laughs> Oh, God.